Now we're going to combine a number of the techniques that we've used previously. We're going to load this image into our backdrop, which is a ledge in a park on a sunny day. Once again, we load it into our background. And we're going to set our display options so that we can see the background image in our camera view. So the geometry we need is pretty obvious. We're going to need a big rectangle. We're going to need a flat area for the ground. And we're also going to need we're going to cheat. Even though this is mostly transparent, we're just going to put a big flat plane up here. So let's jump into Modeler. And here in Modeler, what I have done is created a box that roughly approximates the ledge object in our background image. Now when I created it, I did create it with a slight bevel because the sides were are not sharply square. And just giving it one set of bevel of roundness on the edge will soften the shadows or whatever when it comes around the corner. Uh, when I originally did this, I did go whole hog and create a subdivision surface object to make it nice and soft. And you know, it was a lot of work and it didn't look any better. The other thing I created was the reflection room. Now the only difference about this room than the reflection box we had earlier is this has two different sides. It has the polygons facing inward the normals are all facing inward. So when the images get mapped, they get mapped and they're pointing inward to the reflection object. The only difference here is that I have several different surface names. You can see with the blue and the white. This is because in our image, this is a ledge, say, in a park. If we're looking off this way. If someone was sitting on that image, on that ledge, what would they see? They wouldn't see, an, probably wouldn't see something exactly like this. They would probably see something like uh, buildings or trees or some other image with the same kind of lighting, same time of day, but a different scene. So what this does, what this reflection box allows us to do in this back image, what's behind here, I'm going to use my original image, but on the other side, I'm going to put a building or something that more accurately reflects, at least in our imagination, what might be on, what you might see while sitting on that ledge. So I'm going to send these objects to layout and position them so they match up with my background image. And here's my object as they have come into layout. I'm going to position things first kind of just by eye. Just kind of get a rough estimate there back to my camera view. In fact, I think I need to go to wireframe here. Move my camera so that we get closer to the ballpark of what we want, of matching what we have here. And it takes a lot of guessing and moving things around. And this can be quite tedious, but in the long run, getting it to line up just the way you want, spending the time now will save you a lot of time later. All right, we're having an issue right here. Might be easier to see in solid shade. If I get too close, you know, this happens. We hate this. There is a way of, of fixing this. In our display options, it's the grid square size. If I lower this, it makes my grid smaller, but it also allows the OpenGL to work a little bit better. See how that backs off? It's not move, nothing's moving, except my grids are getting bigger and smaller. 
it automatically sets to the it adjusts itself to the size of the object in the scene um, which is normally good unless of course you have a big stinking object you might have a huge ground plane or you might have like oh say a big reflection box and if it scales itself to that you're not exactly where you want to be so we're getting I can see my angles kind of off here but we're going to get kind of in the ballpark and that's not looking too bad. I gotta move it here. There we go, that's not too bad. Now you may have noticed when I created this object in Modeler, I put my pivot point up in this corner. Um, and I did that earlier when I was creating a shadow catching object for the old building and I did it here because I knew this is kind of kind of be my point of interest and I'm going to want to rotate this a little bit more I've got my lines to line up and I want it to stretch out that way and I want it to stretch out because I've got this pretty much nailed normally when you build an object you want the pivot point in the center but you do a lot of cheating when you're doing compositing I'm going to get my stretch tool and just stretch it off to the end of the scene. Alright, that is pretty well matched. Now I want to make sure that my my box is kind of matching the ground plane here. I see I have to move it back. Probably move it up. And we're going to have to switch this to solid so we can see. And something's going to have to change well, it looks like we'll probably have to apply our front projection mapping so we can get this centered a little bit better. So let's just jump into our surface editor and apply front projection mapping. So in our surface editor, we have a number of surfaces. We have the back wall. We know we're going to want a front projection map of our background on there. So we'll go to front projection, image map, and that would be our ledge building and let's start off with a 50-50 mix with that and let's just go ahead and copy that and put it onto our ledge and see what we have so far well the OpenGL is just going nuts on this it's okay on the ledge it's not so good on our background let's render this out and see what we have not too bad looking fairly realistic I can see that our ground is is a little bit low there. Let's grab our reflection box, move it up, and probably need to rotate it about like that. You see it coming in. All right, a quick render. Okay, I can see that the line needs to be right there, so we'll move it up just a little bit more, and I think that's pretty close. And let's also copy that to our ground, and I bet you we're pretty close to dead on right here, and sure enough, there we are. So it's not looking that different from our background image, we're at 50-50 for luminosity and diffuse. So let's add an object into here. We will add a, um, let's add a sphere and place it on top of the ledge. Let's switch this to shaded. Everything's the same color now. Well we can go ahead and change the color of my ledge here. And because it's completely being overwritten by the front projection mapping anyway, it's not going to change anything in the render. And before I do that, I'm going to make a few settings. Our light right now is kind of coming, well, it's the default light. We really want it to come in. Let's reset that so we can see where it is while we're in the scene. 
And where's our light? There it is. And let's rotate that. We know that our light's kind of coming from this angle. We're going to cheat a little bit. We'll put somewhere like here. Let's see what our render looks like. We are definitely going to need more lights in this scene, but for now, that's going to be fine. Now, examining this image, what I'm seeing, we've got our little curly cues here. We're going to have to fake that if we're going to want to put anything on there to believably seem like it's there. So how do we do that? We're going to use projection mapping, or uh, we're going to use projection image with a spotlight. So we will add a spotlight. We're going to call this, uh, well, let's just call it spotlight. Go into our properties. We're going to need to load a projection image. And we just happen to have one already made called Ledge Light. Let's take a quick look at that. This is an image called Ledge Grid, which I just went into my paint program and painted and just kind of randomly but still with trying to get the same sense of the light that's being cast onto this ledge image. So that ledge grid is going into our projection map. So we need to set up our spotlight. We'll go through our light view. And this is something new with LightWave 8. We're seeing our projection image through the light. Now, I have mixed feelings on this. It's kind of neat, but it is kind of distracting at times. I'm going to switch this over. Oh, another thing I need to do with my my box, my reflection box, I need to go and turn off some of these options. We don't need it to self shadow. We don't need it to cast shadow. Do we need it to receive shadow? I don't think so because the light's coming from behind it. And remember, the only place we're going to see it is it's behind the ledge. So unless a light's coming in going that way onto it, we don't need to receive shadows either. So we're going to turn that off for now. And that way, this spotlight will shine right through that box with no problem. So let's take a view from the light and see what this looks like. Okay, looking through the light view and through all our grids, I can make out my ledge and this is kind of matching. It's very similar to how the real grid is kind of lining up on the ledge. Maybe I want to rotate that just a little bit. Uh, even though it seems like my view is rotating, it's actually the light that's rotating. And it just looks that way because we are looking through the light. Now I can tighten that up by decreasing my angle or make it wider. Now the problem with using a projection image is that it doesn't anti-alias, there's no pixel blending, so you sometimes wind up using a very high, uh, very big image and that's just one of the things you have to do. So Let's set it to 100% white. I'm temporarily going to turn off the uh, front projection mapping for my grid, or for my ledge, so I can see the result. Now I can see right here, it doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot and as we go through the anti-aliasing passes. The reason for that, I believe, is because I have a white light going through an image, and that image is black and white, so I'm kind of throwing white on white. And it's just adding to the light. I think we've got more light than we need. So one of the tricks that I do, and this is a handy thing to use in compositing, I can see in the shadows I'm kind of getting my grid. 
I've got too much light. And that often happens, actually it often happens in computer animation in general. There is a tendency just to have too much light. And there's really no reason because we can do things like this. We can, instead of adding light all the time, we can cast negative light. Now there is nothing this is about as unrealistic as it gets. You cannot throw a negative light in the real world. But if we liked the real world that much, we wouldn't be doing computer animation. Now look at this. It's throwing a negative light, casting a negative image, and my image was black and white to begin with. And I had the white grid over black, and that's negative. So now I've got my little curly cues going on there and it looks very much like what I had before All right, what is naturally falling on there another thing I could have done is just created a 3D model of these actual this hurricane fence here and then cast the light through there to cast real shadows I don't have to tell you that's a lot of work. Creating this grid, I just brought a, um, I just started with an image, drew a couple of curly cues, picked it up as a brush, stamped it down, picked it up again, rotated it, and I got that. It's not critical. As long as it gets close, it pretty much gets the job done. So we have this. The problem that we have now is that this ledge already had curly cues on it, already had that shadowing on it. We, wa we want our 3D element to have those same kind of curly cues, but we don't want to add to what's already there. We could, and it wouldn't be a terrible thing, but it wouldn't be right, and it might add too much, and it would be distracting. So we are going to go into our camera property, or our light properties, and tell it to ignore actually both the reflection box and the ledge. So now whatever other element we put in there, we're going to see that the curly cues projection map will be on that new element but not on the current elements. I've just added a sphere, a white ball that is sitting on top of our, our ledge here. Currently, our projection light is shining directly on the ball and it is set at a negative value of minus 100. Our projection light is ignoring both the reflection box and the ledge. We render this. We still have the default surface on our ledge. You can see that the projection image is casting a light that looks very much like this grid. And you know, I just threw that together very quickly. Let's advance a couple of frames another render. So the image is moving, or the object is moving, the image is actually staying still. Now that's pretty harsh. Normally you don't want anything to call attention to itself in a composite. You don't want anybody to look at that and go, oh yes, that adds a lot to the composite. You, when Once something becomes invisible, you have succeeded. So here I've set my value to negative 25 instead of 100. And I would say that's still maybe a little bit too sharp, but I'd have to look at the images as it falls on the ledge to really judge. So let's put our, pre well, let's do another thing. Let's turn on our shadows. Now we have our main light, our key light here which is kind of illuminating similar to what we would have what appears the sun is coming in because it seems to be coming in because it is casting the shadow 
of the grid onto the ledge. So we've got our ray trace shadows turned on, doing a quick render. And that's looking pretty good. Shadow may be a little bit light. Let's see what the setting is on our ledge. Maybe too much luminosity. We'll take that down. Bring our diffuse back up. And let's turn on our front projection mapping again. Ledge. Turn that on. Turn off our pixel blending. We'll turn on smoothing since we've got a little ledge on there. We've got the bevel. It'll soften the area. Let's take another render at this. And that is pretty darn close. Although it seems I think I have my camera angle off, or my light angle, this shadow seems to be going off that way, where the real shadows seem to be coming off this way a little bit. So let's just do a quick tweak of our light. And rotate it this way a bit. Frame that at zero. Another quick render. And I think we're getting closer and closer. So this is using the projection map image on our spotlight to project this. It looks a little big. Uh, normally I'd go in and shrink that down by tightening up my projection map. I want it big just so we can see it here but we're pretty much in the ballpark. Um, we need to have some backlighting on the ball. Let's add some backlighting right now. In fact, let's set our key light a little brighter than that. I always like to make the key light, which would be representing the sun, a little softer. And I'm going to add kind of a um, rear light, although in this case, point light, oddly enough, the backlighting will be in front of the object. And well, let's just leave it on for the, for the ball, uh, for the ledge and the background image. I can tell right away that's a little bit too bright. So we'll take that down to 25. And this is just purely shooting from the hip. But you know, that's not too bad. I can see my ball is kind of shrink, uh, seems to be down, falling into the ledge. But this is the default surface for the ball. Nothing tricky, nothing special about this ball at all, except for the fact that it's just lit pretty well. We do have a problem, and you know only sharp eyes are going to see this, or people who are accustomed, or, or your peers. In this image, we see that we have our shadows coming from the grid. In theory, you would not see that grid shadow behind the shadow of the ball. It depends on how much work you want to go through. One of the things you can do is just go in and completely erase, create a uh, version of this, if this is a still, without the grid, and then composite it in just where the shadow is using the um, shadow density map as a guide. Or you can make this shadow darker so it all blends in. Um, depends literally how important it is to you, um, how critical it is, how fast it moves by. It all can be done. It's just a matter of how much work you want to invest in that particular project. And really at this point, I'm thinking it's looking pretty good. My lighting's pretty good. The next step would be to add some reflection to this ball.